Are your manuscripts typically shorter than the targeted word count for your genre? Have you ever received feedback that maybe your manuscript moves too quickly, or that readers were not able to really immerse themselves in each scene? In general, do you sometimes feel as though your prose falls flat and doesn't come to life to its truest potential. If any of this resonates with you or sounds like something that you are struggling with, then you might be an underwriter. An underwriter is a term used to describe a writer who typically only writes the bare bones of their story. There isn't enough added to the scene for it to feel layered and like it is as true to real life as possible. And a lot of the time scenes don't go much deeper than just the upper level facts of the story that need to happen in the scene. It doesn't really feel like the scenes and characters and places are alive. They just feel like they are placeholders in a story. This can sometimes manifest itself when you have a manuscript that is much shorter than the target word count of your genre. Being an underwriter is completely okay. All writers, I think, exist somewhere on the spectrum between underwriters and overwriters, and everyone is sort of somewhere on that line. If you are an underwriter who wants to flesh out their manuscript and make it longer and make the scenes deeper, there are a lot of really actionable, tangible strategies that you can employ to flesh out your manuscript and make it feel like a more robust novel instead of the skeletal outlines of one. In this video, I'm gonna share with you all of my strategies and recommendations for fixing underwriting and making your writing more robust, from introducing more subplots to fleshing out all of your character arcs and plot arcs and diving into every scene on a sensory level. You will walk away from this video empowered and excited to revisit your manuscript and breathe life into your prose. Before we get started, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Claire Fraze and I am an award-winning young adult author who makes videos on this channel sharing actionable writing tips that helps me make my own writing better. I am the author of the They Stay series, including books They Stay, They Whisper, and They Return, which are behind me. On this channel, I review craft resources, interview authors, interview marketing professionals, and share all of the resources that personally helped me elevate my own writing as I was learning how to write. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel and liked this video. If not, it's totally fine. Now, without further ado, let's get into the content. So quick disclaimer to share that I am personally an overwriter. I am not an underwriter. I've not personally struggled with this. I overwrite everything. I add way too much into my manuscripts. I reach my target word count for a first draft by like the midpoint of my story. It's out of control. I have to get that under control. I do all of the stuff that I'm sharing in this video before I even start writing. So I think that's part of the reason I'm an overwriter because I'm naturally an overwriter and then I go really hard over <laughs> all of these outlines and arc maps and everything. I also have multiple friends who are underwriters and the strategies that I share in this video are things that they have suggested themselves or have shared as ways that they combat their underwriting and help beef up their manuscripts. If you are an underwriter who is trying to beef up their story, plot and character arcs are your best friends. You've probably seen a story arc somewhere before. It's the sort of like squiggle thing that looks like it's like a pregnant lady laying on their back from the side. Like it starts out flat and then has a rising action and then has a big climax and then goes down. This is what it looks like. It has a beginning, a rising action leading towards a climax, a climactic point, and then a resolution at the end. The higher the line goes up, the more tense and more tension and conflict there is in the scene or the story, and then the more it goes down, the less. So it's like plotting conflict against time. The main plot points of an arc are your beginning, middle, and end. The five plot points I typically think of when I am mapping out my own arcs are my point of entry, which is the point right at the beginning of the arc when you start it, your inciting incident that kind of kicks off the rising action, the midpoint, which is the point kind of right dividing the arc in half right before the climactic point, the climax, the climactic point, and then the resolution and push into the next book or chapter or scene or whatever. Oftentimes, one can be an underwriter if they haven't mapped out their story arc to its fullest potential. Maybe they skipped a point of entry, maybe they skipped a midpoint, maybe they have one or two rising action scenes but haven't beefed out the rising action so every single scene stacked on top of each other is getting increasingly tense. Every single element of your story should follow an arc and have its own distinct arc. Your main plot should have its own arc. 
your every single main character who grows over the course of the story should have its own arc. Every relationship should have an arc. Every subplot you have should have an arc. No plot will be interesting to readers if it just stays stagnant over the course of the book. Things have to change. People have to change. Relationships have to change. Mysteries have to change and be revealed. So when I plot out my own books, this is how I start. This is my very first step. I go to my whiteboard and I draw out these arcs and I fill them out with a bunch of preliminary ideas for the general structure of the story. And I do it for everything. So I write thrillers and mysteries. So my first big major arc is my plot arc. So you have the point of entry when you first meet the characters, the inciting incident where you find the dead body or something scary happens, the rising action as the villain is killing more people or is attacking the main characters more and is getting increasingly dangerous or close to killing them. You have the big midpoint, which changes the stakes in some really big way or changes the story into a very clear kind of part one and part two. The climax, when they fight the big villain or solve the mystery and then the resolution after they've solved the mystery and everybody is happy. That's the first arc that I establish. After that, because I write very character-driven thrillers, I write out a character arc for each of my main four characters. In my series right now, I have four main characters. So each of them gets their own individual arc. I figure out who they are at the beginning of the book, figure out their rough journeys throughout the book, and figure out who either they need to be by the end of the book or who they naturally will become at the end of the book. Usually I have a plan for them over the course of a series if I'm writing a series, so they kind of need to turn into a certain version of themselves by the end of the book. So I have to pick and choose events to put on the arc and shape the arc to create the final version of the character that I want to create. And then every subplot that I have also has their own arc. So every romantic relationship has an arc. They all have a conflict. They have something they're working through over the course of the story. They usually have an inciting incident beginning part where they're like feeling each other out and then they will have some sort of issue they're working on over the course of the book. They'll have a climax where like the romance comes to a head or they're like fighting and then they kiss or something and then there's a resolution where they are a different version of that couple than they are at the beginning. If I have a subplot of a character kind of discovering who they are or getting comfortable in their new situation in life, I start by having them being very anxious and uncomfortable and then I figure out all the events that have to happen in order to get them to be a version of themselves that's more self-assured. So I will be drawing out these arcs for days and trying to figure out and piece together in my mind, like I'm putting together a puzzle, all the different things that need to happen to get all of these characters to the different places that they need to be and to get the main thrust of the mystery to where it has to be. Once I have a general idea of how everybody's gonna be growing and changing and all the plots are gonna be changing over the course of the book, I go and I put everything in a plot grid, which is the way that I like to outline. I've made a couple of videos on this channel sharing about plot grids and if you are interested in learning how I like to plot using plot grids, I have linked the videos in the description of this one. This process always results in me having these extremely detailed and fleshed out outlines for things that need to happen over the course of the story before my characters ultimately reach the end. So this is a way that you can prevent underwriting. If you do all of this work up front, it's unlikely that you're gonna run out of material to put into your story before you reach the end because there's gonna be just so much to cram in there from all of these subplots and character arc growth arcs and all of your main plots and all of the different little clues that you have to put in and everything. There's just going to be a lot of material to put into a manuscript. So even if your prose is pretty thin and not really like rich quite yet, which it shouldn't be, it's a first draft, mine definitely isn't, you're still going to have a lot of material to play with. But if you're not a plotter and you prefer to write without really having an outline in the beginning and you finish your first draft and you have a version of it that is underwritten, this is also a very useful tool for analyzing that draft and figuring out how you're gonna approach the second draft. I recommend focusing and analyzing on three separate arcs in your story and making sure that those arcs have a clear beginning, middle, and end, conflict, and change. The first arc that you wanna flesh out is your general A plot arc. This is your mystery plot. This is your, we found a dead body in the woods and are looking for the killer. This is the plot that's on the blurb of your book, it's on the back cover, this is the main hook of your book. If you write romance, the A plot is the romance. If you write fantasy, maybe it's a big dragon invasion on a castle somewhere on the hill and the dragons are threatening the kingdom. 
I don't write fantasy, if you can tell. If you write sci-fi, maybe that's the intergalactic space battle that kicks off and propels your book forward. Or those are the, that's the new alien planet, the people that invade the alien planet and go learn about the new planet that has a problem in it, which is the conflict of the story. Most people have a pretty fleshed out plot A, that's not really where a lot of the underwriting comes in. Although you can always flesh things out more. If you're writing mysteries and thrillers, you wanna make sure to balance this because you wanna have it be fleshed out, but not so fleshed out that it is slow. So you wanna make sure that you add enough in to make it feel fast paced, even though it's long. You never want to pad your books. But if you flesh out all of those arcs to their fullest potential and you have all of that material crammed in, it's not gonna feel slow because they're gonna be racing through all of this material. Because the material is there for a reason. It has purpose. It's not that all the scenes are dragging. It's just that the scenes are quick, but you just have a lot of different scenes that have to happen before you get to your final climactic moment. The second arc that you want to flesh out is your subplot arc. If you feel that you have a very fleshed out A plot, but you still have a very short manuscript, I doubt that you have added very many subplots. Some people hate subplots. I love subplots. I add so many subplots into my books because I'm balancing these four different character arcs and I want to make sure that each of the characters have their own love interests and things that are going on with them. And so each of them have their own kind of subplot too. So it gets pretty big pretty quickly. Examples of subplot are if you're writing a mystery and the A plot is hunting the killer, the subplot would maybe be the romance between the detective and their partner. Adding one or two subplots can very quickly increase the length and depth of your story because life is often not simple enough to follow just one simple A plot. It's dynamic and subplots make sense because if two people are spending enough time together, maybe there could be a romantic relationship while they're also hunting for the killer. I know I've said this already, but every subplot has to have an arc. And if your subplots are developed and rich enough, that will very quickly increase both the depth and and the length of your manuscript. And the third arc that I would recommend focusing on if you already have a very fleshed out A plot and subplots are your character growth arcs. Every single main character in your story needs to grow and change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. No person who has been through a big conflict or traumatic experience, like some people would experience in a lot of books that we read, would be the same person coming out of that experience that they are going in. And understanding the growth that a character goes through is very helpful when writing because then you can start to track it and figure out what you need to do as a writer to demonstrate that change. And characters who grow are a lot more relatable and likable to readers. Characters that just feel the same and have no development are not very interesting to read about. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I always start my planning process by figuring out who my character is at the end of the last book in my series or at the beginning of my series and figure out who they are going to become at the end. And then I figure out like on that arc and track it, like what events in each part of the story change them in some way and like what needs to happen in order to facilitate that transformation and what are just a couple of flag posts I can put in the manuscript that are big moments of change for the character. Like big events that would change something in them or demonstrate a different or bring out a different part of their personality for them to recognize and incorporate into their main personality. Characters never realize they're growing. It's a very subtle thing and use the author need to understand it, but the characters can never be like, wow, I'm so different than I was at the beginning. It's a very subtle thing. So you have to be careful not to get too on the nose with it. But readers should be able to say like, wow, at the end of this book, this character is so different and in this really new, exciting way compared to the beginning of the book. And if you do all that and you're still underwriting, there may be a couple of things that you can do differently in your prose to also help beef up and elevate your prose. The biggest thing is focusing on the five senses. This is, the, this is not as easy to analyze as the first part of this video, but as a writer, you want to be able to visualize and smell and picture and hear every single part of the setting that your character is in. You wanna be able to see your characters like you're watching a movie and hear them like you're listening to them speak in real life. A couple of authors who I've spoken to in the past have these different routines that they do where they will just sit there and close their eyes for a couple of minutes before starting to write. And they go and they like look around the room in their mind. They'll look around the fictional place that they're going to be in. They will have a little conversation with the characters. They will just get themselves oriented before they start writing. But you need to develop a sense 
for exactly whether or not you can feel the world. Because if you as the author can't feel the world, the readers won't be able to feel the world. And if you are able to make your readers feel the world, they are going to be way more connected to both the world, the characters, and the conflict of the story. I have to remind myself of the five senses thing pretty often. I tend to really rely on sight because I see everything like a movie in my mind, but I don't taste it or hear it as much. So I am trying to be more conscious about that. But you don't need to do everything all at once, just being mindful of it and thinking about it as you're revising. I wouldn't worry about it when you're writing your first draft. All of this stuff can be done in editing. This is like you can do a five senses editing pass. Don't worry about it when you're just figuring out what your story is. You want to make sure you get the bare bones of your story in place before you worry about any of the pros. So that's it for this video on underwriting. I hope that it was helpful. If it was, please make sure to like the video and also subscribe to my channel. As I mentioned before, my name is Claire Fraze and I'm an award-winning young adult author who makes videos about writing craft things, sharing writing tips that helped me clarify the way that I think about writing and improve my craft overall. Are you an underwriter? If so, what strategies have you employed that have helped you beef up your manuscripts? I love it when you guys comment different things that worked for you and help each other out in the comment section. It makes me feel like we're running our own mini writing group. I hope you have a fantastic week, everybody. And as always, happy writing.